Welcome to Up Next with Popcorn Kelly, episode 10. You know, in this episode, I'm going to explore the impact collapsing categories would have had on two differently sized matches by exploring the following three questions. Would collapsing categories meaningfully change the percentage of shooters winning a buckle? Would it materially impact the competition within the match? Or would collapsing categories result in significant cost savings for having purchased fewer buckles? I do want to give a few caveats before we begin. There are nuances to the protected versus unprotected categories and how they're collapsed or built. Well, I believe what I relate is accurate. I can't cover every possibility or explain every option. And I want to say up front that these results are based on our experience at Illawa Irregulars running the Illinois State Championship and therefore may not be applicable to others. I also need to add that I'm sharing this strictly in the vein of sharing information. Please understand I'm not saying our approach is the best or only way of doing things. It's nothing more than giving you a little backstory as to why we do it the way we're doing it. Each club and match has its own unique set of circumstances and therefore should and really must do what's right for them. Before I get any further into the video, I want to give you my overall takeaway. I was surprised by how little impact collapsing categories would have had on the percentage of shooters winning a buckle, the overall competition within the match, and the overall cost of the match had we collapsed categories. Based on my findings, we will continue using a hybrid model of offering all protected categories and a few targeted unprotected categories, but not collapsing categories based solely on the minimum number of shooters in them. You know, for those of you that want to skip to the chase, feel free to fast forward directly to my review summary at the end of this video. Having said that, I'd encourage you to at least listen to the two anecdotes I relate next that prompted me to perform this review. After the anecdotes, I get into the weeds. So why this topic and why today? Well, frankly, because of two recent conversations I had with people coming to the Illinois State Championship. In one conversation, the caller asked point blank if we collapse categories. I replied that we don't, and she and her husband would absolutely shoot in the categories they signed up for. Her response was, and I quote, that's what I wanted to hear. We had their reservations, registrations a week later. In the second conversation, the caller, who was already signed up for the Illinois State Championship, called to see if I knew whether or not another match he was considering attended collapsed categories. I didn't know, so I went to their website, looked up their registration form. That form indicated that they do collapse categories with, with less than three shooters in them. And his response was interesting. He mentioned that he and his wife were on the fence about the match. He'd like to go, but they'd have to take time off from work, travel many miles, and ultimately spend hundreds of dollars to attend the match. And he was concerned that after all of that, one or both of them would get moved out of the category that they wanted. I don't know what they're doing, but at the time I'm recording this video today, I don't see their name on that who's coming list. While we've never collapsed categories, these conversations made me wonder if the perceived benefits of collapsing them outweighed the concern expressed by these callers. I had some extra time on my hands, so I decided to model the impact collapsing categories had on a match using actual match registration data from our Illinois state registrations. I modeled two differently sized matches, a larger 140 shooter match and a medium sized 70 shooter match. So let's start with a quick review of the shooter's handbook concerning category minimums. The handbook reads in part, in the interest of promoting a true competitive environment, categories above the base categories will only be honored if they meet the minimum entry mandates. Regional and state championship level, 
three entries minimum in all categories. It goes on to say, however, that shooting categories offered at any match are ultimately the discretion of the match officials unless the individual contract indicates otherwise. You know, I want to commend SAS on a clear and concise policy. It encourages, strongly encourages, category minimum, but it allows the match officials to make the final decision. So next, a review of protected versus unprotected categories I think is important. So here's a matrix showing the unprotected and protected categories. The protected categories are listed in the green shaded cells in the left column with the unprotected categories that are theoretically available, represented by the peach, and the gray shaded cells listed in the middle of the matrix. The protected categories include all of the base, style, and costume categories, the open age categories of cowboy and cowgirl shown at the top of the left column, as well as buckaroo and junior on the young end. And then Elder Statesman, Cattle Baron, El Patron, and El Rey on the upper end of the age scales. These are all protected categories and therefore are never collapsed. Everything else is unprotected. So, <laughs> confused? Well, it may be easier to think of it this way. Wrangler through Silver Senior age categories and all age-based style and costume categories are unprotected. Everything else is protected. It's important to note that while elder statesmen and older are protected, that applies only when they are shooting in the age-based category. It does not apply when they're shooting in a style or costume category. For example, elder statesmen can't be collapsed to silver senior or lower, but Elder Statesman Gunfighter can be collapsed to Basic Gunfighter or anything in between if offered. Again, age-based categories for style and costumes are not considered protected categories. For purposes of this review, we offered all protected categories in the green shaded cells down the left column as well as the unprotected categories represented by the peach colored cells in the Illinois State Championship. The unprotected categories include Wrangler through Silver Senior and some age-based style categories for Duelist Gunfighter and Frontier Cartridge Duelist. Shooters were allowed to select any category we offered on their registration form. Now, let's compare the impact had we collapsed unprotected categories that did not have at least three shooters in them. I'll do this for two matches using this year's match registrations. I'll create a 140 shooter match using the first 140 shooters who signed up for the state championship and then I'll create a 70 shooter match by using the first 70 shooters who signed up. So here are the results for the 140 shooter match. Any cell with a number in it represents the number of shooters in that category for the uncollapsed match. The red numbers represent the number of shooters in each category that would be reassigned to a different category to achieve the required three shooter category minimum in the unprotected classes. Seven people would have been reassigned and we'd have five fewer categories, but we found that we would barely move the needle on the number of shooters getting a buckle. As this table shows, the percentage of ladies winning a buckle would not change at all. It was 62% before collapsing and remained 62% after collapsing. The percentage of men winning a buckle would drop just 5% from 58 to 53%, and overall, the number of shooters winning a buckle would drop by just 3% from 59 to 56%. In terms of competition, the percent of shooters in categories with three or more people in them would rise from 53 to 60%. However, 40% of all categories would still have fewer than three shooters. Those categories will be in the protected list. In terms of cost, we'd purchase about 11 fewer buckles for a savings of about $220 or so. 
you know, that's not much in the scheme of things, particularly for a 140 shooter match. So the end result I found collapsing categories would have had little to no meaningful impact on our match, certainly not enough for us to involuntarily move shooters to a different category. So that was a fairly good sized match. I wondered what effect collapsing categories would have on a smaller match, so I created a match based on the first 70 registrants. <clears throat> Cutting to the results, the total percentage of shooters winning a buckle would drop just 4% from 81 to 77%. And in terms of competition, the percent of shooters in categories with three or more people in them would rise from 40 to 53%, but it represents just nine people being moved. Another way to look at it is that this would still leave 33 shooters in protected but arguably uncompetitive categories, that is to say categories with two or fewer people. And in the end, we'd save about another $200 in buckle costs. While the buckle award rate shot to 80% of registrants, collapsing categories only dropped the award rate by 3%. I'm still concerned about involuntarily moving nine people to a different category, particularly when 33 other people were able to remain in their protected categories with less than three. While I won't spend much time on it here, I also looked at what it would take to get the near 80% buckle award rate of the 70 person match nearer to the 60% rate we saw in the 140 shooter match. Yes, 80% buckle award rates for a 70 shooter match is high. It also means the buckle budget would be about 33% higher per shooter than our 140 shooter match example. You know, thinking that perhaps the 60% award rate in the 140 shooter match might be a better target for a 70 shooter match, I wanted to see what it would take for us to get there. I found that in order to get the 70 shooter award rate down to 60% as it was in the 140 shooter match, I would have to eliminate all unprotected categories and collapse everything down to just the protected categories. You know, that'd be an awfully draconian and awfully tough to sell and it might not bode well, frankly, for future matches. I definitely explore other solutions first or simply end up accepting the higher award rates. In our case, collapsing categories wouldn't significantly change the percentage of people winning a buckle or increase the competition within the match, and would have only marginal impact on costs. However, as illustrated in the two anecdotes, collapsing categories would have had the unintended consequence of costing us two registrations this year and possibly, quite possibly, four. Based on this, we will continue to offer all protected categories and a few key unprotected categories, and then allow the shooter to select and shoot in the category of their choosing. That doesn't mean offering every potential unprotected category. It simply means offering a targeted few that we guarantee. And we will revisit and possibly adjust what we offer based on previous experience. For those that want the competition, we provide a way for them to self-select into a more competitive category. To accomplish this, we publish the list of shooters and their categories and update it on a regular basis. This allows people to change their categories up until the cutoff point oh, a couple of weeks before the match. This allows the people who want the competition to select or change so they can get the competition they desire. I'd much, much rather have someone self-select into another category than to have us move someone involuntarily. For our club, this is the best of both worlds. It balances all shooters' interests and doesn't involuntarily move anyone. Again, these results are based on our experience and may not apply to you. Let me know what you think and what your club does in the comments below. Anyway, 
As Colin Quinn used to say on Saturday Night Live, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. As always, thanks for watching this unusual episode of Up Next. This is Popcorn Kelly signing off, and hopefully our paths will cross one day, wherever that may be. Thanks for watching. I may wear my mall boots and comfort denim jeans, but my heart is straight and true. That's how I see things. My Stetson hat on my head, tipped like little Joe's. I'll be like that when I'm dead, when there ain't